Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to World of Warcraft Legion. And we are going to start out the episode by hunting down the Headless Horseman for our failed firefighting expedition in the last episode. And that should go ahead and finish Hallow's End up. And we can head back to Stormheim and continue getting that Aegis of Agrimar. So, let me go ahead and queue up for that, and I will see you guys in the Scarlet Monastery. Oh, here we go. Hopefully the healer. Yeah. As you can see, missed a Pandaria loading screen there, so... Now, the horseman fight is pretty fun, I have to say. I, I enjoy it thoroughly. So, we head over here. I mean, this is like right at the entrance. There is a mausoleum over here with a pumpkin. And avoid all that for Scarlet Monastery. And the tank talks to the pumpkin here to start the ritual and summon the, uh... Oh, here we go. It is over. Your search is done. Let fate choose now. The righteous one. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the guy who wasn't the tank started the encounter. That's nice. That's always what you want to see. Now, all in all... Horseman fight is relatively simple. Um, he occasionally does an AoE flame attack. You just have to avoid it or hope that uh, most of the time you just let the healer try and heal you through. But once we take care of his body, his head will fly off and we have to DPS the head, which is actual his main uh, his main damage. Where to go? Where is it? There it is. <laughs> you gotta chase down the head, do as much damage as possible, and then he gets back on his body, back to full up. And then we start the second phase. And that's pretty much it. Wash, rinse, and repeat. Now, there's some pretty good uh, loot that he drops, um, actually. He can drop some uh, sword from back in the day that summons pumpkin, uh, pumpkin soldiers, a uh, plate helmet, See there, I'm disoriented. I got a pumpkin thrown on my head. You are not a nice person. And there went the head. Now we're keeping our eye on the ball. And he's sitting there calling his body an idiot. There we are. Now here comes uh, phase three. This is where he actually summons some binkies to come serve him. Sinister squashlings. See all the pumpkins landing around us. However, it looks like we're going to be pretty good. Whoa. And I'm not doing any AoE. It's not my not my problem. Gotcha. Aha. Achievement earned. Bring me the head of Oh wait. Hey, we got some nerds. Gnomish, nutritional, effervescent, remarkably delicious sweets. Awesome. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, loot-filled pumpkin. And we get some tricky treats and a female torrent mask. <laughs> and looks like one of our guys got the horseman's horrific hood, which is the plate helmet. And it actually laughs like him too, which is awesome. But that was the horseman, guys. You farm that once a day for some good loot. So, let's go ahead and get out of here. And I was actually back in Ogremar real quick because we had forgotten one quest, and that was to go cheer someone up at the Broken Tusk. And once we do that, we can uh, go meet Nathanos Blightcaller in Dreadwake's Landing and finish the rest of our uh, Stormheim errands. Let's see what this guy has to say. Yeah, he was he was hanging out in here. Edgar Goodwin. And you are. What do you want? Candace sent you? She knows me too well. I've hit a rut in my research, and I've been waiting for a very important delivery, but the courier's late. Watch your back. I told that courier to take the Zeppelin, but no. He had to use the goblin ship. Well, now he's late and my precious family heirlooms are with him. If you're willing to help, would you go down to the docks east of Ogremar, board the goblin ship, and see what's keeping him? 
Search the cabin of the hired courier ship at the docks east of Ogremar for evidence of what might be delaying him. I've never done this before. Not that I can recall. He's talking about the goblin ship here on the docks on the outside. Let's uh, go ahead and see what's shaking here. Hope you guys have a good Friday. Have a, I had an awesome Thursday. Good lord. That was a day of um, geekdom. We saw the trailer for the Nintendo Switch, which is going to be the new console, which looked awesome. Uh, the trailer for Red Dead Redemption 2. And the uh, trailer for Logan. Which essentially is uh, Left for Dead, but with mutants. Dark Spear Loyalist, a raptor. Guess we have to head down into the hold. Um, hello? I'm looking for a, curi a courier. Yeah. Where would I uh, find such a thing? Search the courier's cabin. Well, I guess this might be the cabin. I'm not seeing anything that we can tap, though, so it might be up here. Ah. Oh dear. There's a nasty looking knife in his back. This courier won't be meeting with his employer anytime soon, and the crate he was hired to transport seems to have disappeared. A quick search of the cabin reveals no evidence of the killer's identity or motives. The crate you were sent to retrieve has vanished. As you leave the cabin, you know something small moving underfoot. A trail of spiders crawls out from under the slain courier's bed. What could they be, where could they be heading? Follow the spiders to their destination and follow th and question the man you find there. Ugh. Oh, that's that's not good. Well, let's uh go ahead and see where the creepy crawlies take us. Out of all the trailers that I saw, I'd have to say that I was most excited about Actually, actually, to tell you the truth, I was excited about all of them. Red Dead's my favorite game. It was a teaser. It wasn't necessarily a trailer. So, um, I'm wanting to see more of the plot line for Red Dead, but Red Dead looked beautiful for a console game. So, I can't wait to go back into that world uh, in single player and in uh, online play. Also found out from Sony that they're going to be doing um, releasing Red Dead Redemption on PS Now. So I may see what I can do about renting the game on PS Now and doing a playthrough of the original Red Dead. But kind of give ourselves a primer. And that's going to be a long playthrough, but it's going to be definitely fun. These are a lot of spiders, holy crap. I would be freaking out in real life. Um, the trailer for the Nintendo Switch was very interesting. A lot of people thought it was going to be the Nintendo NX and it was just going to be called that. Not really the case. Um... Um, from what I saw from the Switch, I think they're doing what they really wanted the Wii U to be. Maybe because of technology or budgetary concerns or something of that particular nature, they weren't able to really do much with the Wii U. So it was kind of underwhelming for folks, but I think they may have hit a gold mine here. Um, Rothgar from the Overall Nerds, he has this great analogy. Nintendo isn't a video game company. Nintendo is a toy company that just happens to make video games. So their innovation and the ability to make these things such as the Game Boy and the Switch and doing all this kind of innovative stuff and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But um, still very, very cool. And the concept that you can, the thing that really excited me about that wasn't necessarily the trailer and the stuff that you could do with the actual system. It was the list of uh, third-party developers who were willing to make... Oh, we're heading into the auction house. Third-party developers who were going to make games for the Switch, including like Bethesda and all these... and Square Enix. Auction... a question? Auctioneer Dresmit. Yeah, what do you want? And feel free to browse the items up for bid. I can help you place an item up for auction, too. Have you seen anyone suspicious trying to sell a crate of objects recently? Goblin products are built to blast. We don't deal with those kinds of people here. This auction house only lists honestly acquired merchandise. Merchandising, merchandising. Listen, if you can be discreet about it, there are a bunch of places in this town guys like me aren't supposed to know about. 
Hello there, Grunt. I'm willing to help you out, but you have to promise not to mention this to anyone else. Even talking about this kind of thing can hurt my reputation. I ain't got it. You don't want it. Keep your voice down and don't let word of this get out or I'm finished as an auctioneer. Look, I told that shady character that, <laughs> that there might be a shop more open to his uh, wares in the drag. Drafa and Son Salvage is the name of the place. Look for Dran Drafas. He oversees the salvage of rare and valuable objects from all over Azeroth. Make your way to Drafas and Son Salvage. All right. Come back anytime. So I guess the crate was had spider bait in it or something. I don't know. But in the trailer for the Switch, there was a guy playing Skyrim, like mobily, which is pretty epic if you think about it. So we'll have to um, see what kind of games are going to be offered other than Zelda. The new Mario game that you saw for kind of a split second in that trailer looked really interesting because it looked like a throwback to the old uh, Mario 64, which is probably one of my favorite Marios. And then, well, here we are. The Lion Sunshade. There's no point in denying it, Dran. That thief knew exactly where to bring his stolen goods. I don't know what you're talking about, Elf, and I don't appreciate you poking around in my business. I do, do seem to have mistakenly come into possession of some artifacts from Uldum. Perhaps the Relic Warrior is interested in those? Shall we see what the grunts have to say about your stolen antiquities? Fine, fine. I may have helped him contact an interested buyer, but keep your voice down. You'll scare away my customers. Now we're getting somewhere. And you, what's your interest in this? Let's have a word. Glory to the Sindori. Leave it to Droffers to have a buyer lined up already. We should combine our efforts to track down this thief and keep the crate's contents from falling into the wrong hands. What's in the crate? What's in the box? So someone else hired you to retrieve this crate. I don't like the sound of that. That crate's contents belong in the care of the reliquary. The items it holds are very powerful and very dangerous. We have to find the meeting that Dran set up between the thief and the collector. But first, we need to protect ourselves from the effects of handling that crate. Acquire some strange dust, get vials from an alchemy merchant, and pick some blood nettle in the Valley of Wisdom. Obtain two strange dust, five crystal vials, and five blood nettle. Keep your wits about you. What? I didn't really expect... Okay. Wild goose chase here. Well, let's grab some vials. Oh, I don't think we can get vials anymore. Can we? What do you need? Be safe. That was like an old... That was an old alchemy thing. Wait a minute. Oh, here's alchemy. Derp. My bad. What are you looking for? There we are. There's our crystal vials. Like, a lot of the regions that you needed to do stuff isn't really around anymore. Well, here's some of the plants. The, the Logan trailer was awesome. It had a real independent vibe to it, and I know a lot of people are comparing it to The Last of Us. And that's not a bad thing. In my opinion, I, it looked, I mean, Hugh Jackman as old man Logan looked exactly like Joel from Last of Us, but I'm looking forward to it, especially with the Reavers um, being the bad guys and the one guy with the cybernetic hand. It had a very different vibe than we've seen from any of the, uh, the Fox, the Fox X-Men trailers, so... I think uh, I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's going to be Hugh Jackman's last film as as Wolverine, and then we'll look for Strange Dust, which will probably be marked up because of this uh, holiday. Gold. Yeah, six gold. I've seen worse. Let's go ahead and good grief, Black Stalker, Turok's pet. That is a big pet. That's a hunter pet. I did not know you could capture jellyfish for uh, hunting purposes. That's awesome. That trailer, <clears throat> excuse me, is very dour. And I think one of the primary reasons it is for me is you're starting to see how old Patrick Stewart's getting. Now that may be an effect of the makeup because he's pretty sprightly for a guy his age, but 
That fountain of youth is starting to dry up a bit, unfortunately. The dark times will pass. Did you get all of the ingredients? Let's see what I can remember from the alchemy lessons of my youth. If it explodes, I've done something wrong. This concoction should protect us from the worst effects of carrying or handling the crate. According to Dran, the Collector, who wants the cr crate, is none other than the insane Archmage Xylem of Ashara. The Archmage's faithful servant is to meet with the man who has the crate in a secluded corner of the courtyard in the ruins of Lodoran. Quickly, take the Zeppelin to Tirasfall Glade. You must get there in time to intercept the exchange or retrieve the crate before Xylem gets his hands on it. If you get the crate, meet me at the Wyvern's Tail in the Valley of Honor. Disrupt the meeting between Sanath Limio and the thief in the ruins of Loiteron. So we gotta go all the way back to Undercity and then head back. Oi. Okay, well, I've got a Zeppelin to catch, so I will see you guys there. So, we're here in the ruins of Loiteron, which is right above the Undercity. And looks like the location that we need to is over here. I don't think I have done this before because I've never really ran around this area. So, let's drop down and get all... Sanath Limyo, Servant of Archmage Xylem. Is the a... He's an elf. Archmage Xylem does not bargain with the likes of you ruffian. There shall be no payment. Ooh. What's this? An intruder? Let's see what the artifacts inside this box can do, shall we? Uh, no? How about we don't? Unleashed vo- oh, okay. Meh. I need to target something first. This isn't supposed to happen! Wow, I one-shotted that thing. Oh, he disappeared. Tendrils of dark power dance around the crate, but there's no trace of Sanath Limyo. You can now claim the crate and return it to your employer. You finally found the crate that Edward Goodwin sent you to retrieve. However, it appears the reliquary's representative's warnings about the nature of the crate's contents were correct. Hi there, Sanath. Just pretend I'm not here. There's no doubt that your employer lied to you about the dangers involved in the job. Do you really want to hand the crate over to him? Or would you rather give it to the Lion Sunshade, who believes it's better to keep the crate's contents locked away? Kind of like, um, right at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You may return the crate to either Edgar Goodwin at the Broken Tusk in Ogremar's Valley of Strength, or return the crate to the Lion Sunshade at the Wyvern's Tale. Well, you know what? I had a contract going, so I think I'm going to give it to my undead friend. So, uh, yeah. Seems perfectly... What, what could possibly go wrong? So let's, uh, wait, head back to Ogremar. And we're back to where this all started. I'm not really worried about the crate, because the only thing that came out of that crate was a Void Caller that we killed in one shot, so... I think the Blood Elf may be making a bigger deal out of it than necessary. What is it? Have you brought the crate as we discussed? I never thought you'd be able to recover it. Well, let's see it. Farewell. There you go, with your, uh, mug of brew. It's been sought after, stolen, and sold. Anyone who's tried to tap the magic held within has seen that power turned against him. Oh, whoops. I thought it was him talking. Yet the crate itself appears unscathed and suffused with magical energy. From time to time, it shakes or bobs if its contents were alive. It seems to have an affinity for you, and now, it's yours. Creepy crate. Teaches you how to summon this companion. Oh! Neat! Let's, uh... I've never seen this before. Let's see here. Creepy... Creepy crate. Let's look at him. Oh, nice. It's got the eyeballs. <laughs> nah, I like that. I like that a lot. See? All good. So, now that that's done with, I'm glad we did because I never did that quest on any of my other characters. Let's go ahead and uh, head back to Stormheim, finally, and get the show on the road. Oh, that's weird. Flying through Stormheim and it's not storming. It looks uh, clear as day here. That's strange. You normally don't uh, see Stormheim like this. Huh. Well, we're landing in Valdestal, and we have multiple things that we have to do here. Now, we can go ahead and talk to Cullen and get that ride to uh, the uh, to where Nathanos is, but we also have to go turn in that quest to the Goblin Brothers, 
on the other side of the bridge, because I know we're coming kind of close to the end of that chain, I think. But we still have to... Oh, wait a minute. No, we get we need the meaty rack of muskin ribs, too, don't we? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and kill two birds with one stone, then. Let's go ahead and talk to Cullen and get the uh, flight to Dreadwake Landing and start that line of quests, where we'll actually get a pretty nifty-looking cinema scene. And then we can go uh, hunt for ribs. This ought to be good. Take me to Dreadwake's Landing. Stay wow, this is a very impressive bat to fly with those holes right there in its wings. So we got another Vrykul village right here. I believe this is where all the shield maidens hang out. And there's Nathanos' ship. Bam! There we go. The Dread Wakes Landing. It's actually the first time I've ever noticed that ship there. And if memory serves, Nathanos is over here. Yeah, there we go. It's been a while, sir. Finally, someone competent arrives at this sorry excuse for an outpost. Our efforts to complete Sylvanas' mission are at a standstill, but now we have even more pressing matters on our hands. For the Dark Lady. Our mission in Skull Ashil will have to wait, Rogue. For now, we have more pressing matters to attend to. I just recently arrived with reinforcements for our assault when Greymane's ship sailed in and began barraging our walls. We deployed our siege weapons, but their ground forces quickly overwhelmed us. If you can get to those catapults and take out the dogs manning the cannons, it may give us the window we need to push the attack. Fire four Forsaken Catapults in Greymane's Offensive. The situation has taken a dire turn, Swindlegear. We were unprepared for Greymane's sudden assault, with only a token force left behind at Dreadwake's Landing, and we're paying the toll. The beach is now swarming with Wark and infiltrators, and if the cannons breach our defenses, they'll likely swarm in on us. We're spread too thin here to take the fight to them, but you could change that. Wipe them out. Kill ten Greymane saboteurs or infiltrators. Hmm. Sounds good to me. Let's, uh... Let's go ahead and look appropriate for the task here. Yoink! There we go. <laughs> Don't hurt me, I'm one of you! Oh, ah, thought I could sh shoot him in time. As you can see, we got a lot of Forsaken troops fighting Grey Mains. We got our catapults. Lots of things are happening, so. Let's go ahead and make our presence felt here. That's one. Now we gotta kill ten of these guys. So we are definitely on werewolf slain detail. Van Helsing would be very, very proud. drink up. Actually, I found out, looking at some DPS information, how low outlaw rogues have become on the DPS meter. Now, that sucks, because I'm not doing so much damage, but that also means that there's a significant chance that we're going to get buffed here soon, to kind of make up for everything, so just kind of have to hope for the best there. Bad dogs. Oh, Okay, well, here, I'm going to blind you. That's just basically threw dirt in that worgen's face. Oh, lord. Okay, no. Shoo. I need to get close. Oh, we're in combat? Oh, I forgot. We are in combat. Because we still have this guy, who is not happy that he got dirt thrown in his face. Hiya! Let's take him down quick. And almost. Fire fire catapult number one. At least the worgen aren't trying to flat out destroy the catapults. That would be unfortunate. At least for our progress. Now oh, I'm not stealthed. Why, wretch? Why were you not paying attention? Because you're a genius. Actually, now maybe a primary 
primo time, if I'm being this careless, to eat the uh, nerds. Makes you more intelligent, it says. So... You may not be smarter, but you look it. Alright. I don't... I probably look like a gnome if I take... Oh, I've got the light bulb over my head. I have an excellent idea. Well, how about you ask nicely? Mm-hmm. Nah, I think Greymane's gonna have more problems than, on his mind than just avenging a pup. Call me crazy. And that is number... That's number eight. Oh, there's the guy. Right there. Now we'll sap this. Fire catapult. And we got two more. As you can see, they're swarming with doggies, though. Unfortunately, you guys can't see the light bulb over my head. Dunk. And Unomas. Go ahead and top off the tank. Sap one. And yeah, let's go ahead and just... Tear you to ribbons. Aha! And we have our two dogs that we can go ahead and take out right here, which is convenient. Get that reset. I actually, I'm really liking Mark for Death. I think that was a really good investment. Now that I'm seeing it in action. Especially with how quick dungeons go. And how quickly mobs die. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. And the Muskin Ribs are south of us. We need to take care of that. And what are you guys doing? And I'm just going to throw dirt in your eye. It looks like the Gilnean and Infiltrators brought some heavy ordnance to the fight. It's like they intend to use them in the walls of Dreadwake's Landing. If these could be rigged to Greymane's ship, it could make for a decisive end to his assault on the outpost. Plant three Gilnean heavy explosives onto the hull of Greymane's ship. Don't have to tell me twice. It's all about the ordnance, man. But it looks like there are some fishies down here. You cannot hide from me. Oh lord. <laughs> Blade flurry up, fire the cannons. Oh, we can't fire the cannons. Ah. Okay, well, mistakes have been made. Drink, drink, drink. Like I said, those water mobs, man. They can be uh, annoying sometimes. Shank. And shank. There we are. Much better. Now that was one. We need to plant these in two more locations. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can sap a fish. That would be amazing if I could, but not with the success rate that I am I am wanting. Let's see what happens here. Take him down quick. The one thing that sucks about some of the stuff that I've done is I don't have nearly as much energy as I had before. So that can be very problematic. Yoink. One more fishy. Fish are not friends here. In this case, fish are food. Sorry, Bruce. And one more and it looks like this is a fish-free zone. Will you shut up already? Explosives are set. Get to a safe distance and detonate them. Oh lord. Okay. Is this a safe enough distance? Out of way of the killer fish. And... Boom. There we are. Good stuff. That should uh, singe Greymane's fur. Uh oh. Yeah, he definitely, he escaped. Probably not happy either. 
So I will go ahead and end the episode here, guys. And when we come back, that was a waste of the ship. Swindle Gear should have been able to take it. But when we come back, we will continue. Uh, we'll turn in those uh, quests to Nathanos and get some ribs and see what other trouble we can get into here. Oh, Lord. That is a very large uh, shield maiden on a bear. But hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.